Hello students, welcome to the lecture on scales. So today in this lecture we will learn about scales. So we will see what are scales, what are the different types of scales and how we can draw those scales. So let us start the lecture. It is always possible or convenient to make the linear dimensions on a drawing the same size as the corresponding real dimensions on the object drawn. For example, drawing of a mobile phone. So let us understand this through an example. Over here in this slide, the drawing of a cell phone is shown. Now if we want to draw the drawing of a cell phone, then whatever original dimensions are there for the cell phone, we can use those dimensions only to draw the drawing. Suppose the length of the cell phone is let us say 5 centimeters and let us say height of the cell phone is let us say 15 centimeters. So if we want to draw such dimensions on a piece of paper then we can easily draw. So for such objects like mobile phone we can use original dimensions only while drawing different views of such objects. Now let us consider another case. Drawing of a very big object like aeroplane must perforce be drawn considerably smaller than the object so that drawing can be read and handled with convenience. Of course, now we know the size of aeroplane is very large. So if we want to draw drawings of such objects, then in that case we cannot use their original dimensions on the paper. Now let us take the example of this aeroplane. Suppose the length of the aeroplane is let us say 6 to 8 meters. Now can you draw a line of 6 to 8 meters on your paper? No, you cannot draw. So for such objects, what we do, we reduce all the sizes or all the dimensions of such objects by some proportion so that we can easily accommodate their drawing on paper. So let us understand this through an example. Suppose we have a paper and on this paper we want to draw the front view of that aeroplane. Now for that what we have to do, we have to reduce all the dimensions by some proportion. Only then we can draw those dimensions on the paper for such large size objects. Now let us consider another case. Whereas details of small precision instruments, watches, etc. are made larger than their real size so that drawing can be read clearly. Now if you will take example of the tiny gears used in wristwatches. Now if you see these gears, their dimension is very very small. If you draw their original dimensions on a small piece of paper, then the profile of such an object will not be clear to the reader because of very small size dimensions. So for such objects, what we do, we increase the dimensions of the object by some proportion so that the complete profile of the object should be clearly visible to the reader. So let us understand this through an example. So if we have to draw the drawings of small size objects, what we will do, we will increase all the dimensions of such objects by some proportion so that when we draw those dimensions by increasing their size, the complete profile of the object should be clearly visible to the reader. Now we have seen three examples. In the first example, we said that if we have a cell phone and for such objects, there is no need to increase or decrease the size of the dimensions of the object. That means whatever original dimensions are there, we can draw those dimensions directly on the paper. Then in the second example, we learned that there are such objects like aeroplane where dimensions are very large. So you cannot accommodate original dimensions on a small piece of paper. So for such objects, we reduce their dimension by some proportion so that we should accommodate the drawings of such large size objects on a piece of paper. Then in the third example, we learned that if we have very small size objects like the tiny gears which we use in wristwatches, for such objects we have to 
increase all the dimensions by some proportion so that when we draw the drawings of such objects on a paper the complete profile of the object should be clearly visible to the reader so through these three examples we have learned about scales so let us now see the definition of scales so we will say the proportion by which the drawing of a given object is enlarged or reduced is called the scale of the drawing now there is one important thing to understand in this particular topic that is known as representative fraction or scale factor so let us first see what is its use the scale of a drawing is indicated by a ratio called representative fraction or scale factor so let us understand representative fraction so representative fraction is equal to length of a line in the drawing divided by actual length of line on the object so let us understand this through an example let us quote the second example we took example related to aeroplane suppose the length of the aeroplane is 10 meters that means actual length of the line on the object is 10 meters but can we draw a line of 10 meters on a piece of paper no so we have to reduce that length by some proportion so let us assume that we will draw a line of 10 cm on the paper and we will say that this 10 cm line is actually representing 10 meters so the length of line in the drawing will be 10 cm so it will be equal to 10 cm divided by 10 meters so this rf helps us to find the scale of the drawing that we will see through examples in the coming slides these two terms scale and rf are same the scale is most commonly expressed in the format x ratio y while rf is expressed in the format x divided by y so let us see this through few examples so example 1 we are taking example of aeroplane so 6 meter length of airplane is drawn as 6 cm on the drawing so if we have to calculate rf for this then first of all we will write the formula length of line in the drawing and actual length of line on object so in the question he is saying 6 meter length of air airplane it means it is the actual length of the line on object is drawn as 6 cm so it is the length of line in the drawing so 6 cm divided by 6 meter so this will be equal to now we will convert meters into cm so we have to multiply it by 100 so we will get a value 1 by 100 so rf for this particular example is 1 by 100 so what is the meaning of this that we have reduced the size of the dimensions by 100 times so now you can see that rf is represented in terms of fraction 1 by 100 so we can say that rf of this drawing is 1 by 100 and size of the drawing is reduced by 100 times and you can see that rf is represented in terms of fraction but if we have to talk about the scale of the drawing then we will say scale is 1 ratio 100 so we mention scale in terms of ratio and rf in terms of fraction now in this case we have reduced the actual dimensions of the object in order to accommodate its drawing on a piece of paper so such scales are called reducing scales now let us take another example so example says 6 mm diameter of gear is drawn as 6 cm on the drawing so over here actual length is 6 mm but on the drawing we are representing it as 6 cm so let us calculate rf for this so what is the formula formula is length of a line in the drawing divided by actual length of the line on object so length of the line on the drawing is 6 cm and actual length is 6 mm now we will convert cm into mm so for that we have to multiply it by 10 so what value we will get in the end 10 by 
So in this case, we can say that RF for this particular example is 10 by 1 and size of the drawing is enlarged by 10 times. And if you talk about scale, we will say its scale is 10 ratio 1. So in this case, we have increased the dimensions of the object in order to make its drawing more clear to the reader. So such scales are called enlarging scales. Now let us take another example. So example is 15 centimeter length of mobile is drawn as 15 centimeter on the drawing. So for this RF will be 1 by 1. So it means we are neither reducing the size nor we are increasing the size of the dimensions of the object. We are using original dimensions only. So RF for this particular example will be 1 by 1. And the scale of that drawing will be represented as 1 ratio 1. So such cases where we are using original dimensions of the object on the drawing, we call such scales as full scales. So I hope with these three examples, the definition of the scale and the definition of representative fraction is clear to you. And how to represent RF and scale of the drawing? It is clear to you. And through these three examples, we have learned about reducing scales, enlarging scales, and full scales as well. Now we'll talk about sizes of scale. So reducing scale, enlarging scale, full scale. These are called sizes of scale. So in reducing scale, we have learned that when we reduce the actual dimensions of the object in order to accommodate its drawing on the paper, we call those scales as reducing scales. So what we do in enlarging scales, we increase all the dimensions of the object by some proportion. But in full scales, we keep original dimensions only. Let us see their definitions one by one. Let us start with the reducing scale. So if we have to define a reducing scale, we will say when huge objects are to be drawn, they are reduced in size on the drawing. The scales used for these objects are called reducing scales. It is clear that the length of the object on the drawing is less than the actual length of the object. Reducing scales are mentioned in the format 1 ratio y, where y is greater than 1. Hence, RF for reducing scale is always less than 1. So this we have seen in the previous example. So for example, 1 ratio 2 means drawing made to one half of the actual size. Objects like multi-storied buildings bridges, boilers, huge machinery, ships, aeroplanes, etc. are drawn to reducing scales. Now we will see the definition of enlarging scales. When smaller objects are to be drawn, they often need to be enlarged. The scales used in such cases are called enlarging scales. The length of an object on the drawing is more than the corresponding actual length of the object. Enlarging scales are mentioned in the format x ratio 1, where x is greater than 1. So RF for such scales is always greater than 1. For example, 2 ratio means drawing made to twice the actual size. Enlarging scales are used for objects like screws and gears used in small electronic gadgets, wristwatch parts, resistors, transistors, ICs, etc. Now let us see the third scale. Let us see its definition, full scale. When an object is drawn on the sheet to its actual size, it is said to be drawn to full scale. As the length on the drawing is equal to the length of the object, the full scale is expressed as 1 ratio 1. So for such scales, RF is always equal to 1. Full scales are used for objects like mobile phones, calculators, etc. 
So we have learned about the definitions of these three sizes of scale as well. Now we will see different types of scales. In our syllabus, we have to cover two types. The first type is known as plane scale. It is also called as simple scale. And the second type is known as diagonal scale. So let us start with plane scale first. Let us see its definition. It is a line divided into suitable number of equal parts or units, the first part of which is subdivided into small parts. So over here, the picture of engineering scale is shown that we use to draw or measure lengths. Now, if we observe its construction, so it is just a line, line divided into some equal number of parts. How many parts? Over here, 15 parts. And each part is further subdivided into small parts. But if you see the definition, there is slight change in the definition. Over here he says, the first part of which is subdivided into small parts. Means, in this scale, all parts are not subdivided, only first part is subdivided. This is done to make the construction more easy when we solve some problems. So that we will see when we will take one example. It represents either two main units. So over here, what are the two main units? The one unit is centimeters. So how many centimeters are there? 15 centimeters. Second main unit is millimeters. So in one centimeter, how many millimeters are shown? 10 millimeters. Or one unit and its subdivision. So you may have plane scales where there is only single unit, but that single unit has subdivisions. Fine, right? that we will see through examples. It can measure lengths up to one decimal place. Of course, if we want to measure 3.5, we can measure 3.5 easily. If we want to measure 3.1, we can easily measure 3.1. But can we measure 3.56? No, we cannot measure 3.56 because that is up to two decimal place. So another point to learn about plane scale is that it can measure lengths up to only one decimal place. Now let us see the definition of diagonal scale. Now definition of diagonal scale is related to the limitation of the plane scale. So what is the limitation of plane scale? That plane scale can measure distances only up to one decimal place that I can measure 2.5 centimeters but I cannot measure 2.56 centimeters. So if you want to measure such dimensions then you have to make use of diagonal scale. So let us read its definition. In diagonal scale the smallest unit on plane scale is further subdivided by using diagonal principle. So why this is done? This is done to increase its capability. That means now it can measure distances up to two decimal places. So this we will understand when we will take examples. It represents either three units or only one unit and its fractions up to second place of decimal point. It can measure lengths up to two decimal places. So what is the main difference between plane scale and diagonal scale? Plane scale can show maximum two units, but diagonal scale can show maximum three units. Plane scale can measure distances up to one decimal places, but diagonal scale can measure distances up to two decimal places. Now before taking examples, first of all, let us quickly see the conversions. So one kilometer is equal to 10 hectometer. 1 hectometer is equal to 10 decameter. 1 decameter is equal to 10 meters. 1 meter is equal to 10 decimeter. 1 decimeter is equal to 10 centimeter. 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. These conversions you have to keep in your mind because only then you will be able to solve some problems on scales. Let us see the first problem on plane scale. So let us read the question first. Construct a plane scale 
to show meters and decimeters when 1 meter is represented by 2.5 centimeters. The scale should be long enough to measure up to 6 meters. Mark of 3.3 meters and 5.6 meters on the scale. So in this problem we have to construct a plane scale. So in order to construct the plane scale we first must know what is a plane scale so that we have already learned what is a plane scale it is a line which is divided into equal number of parts and the first part of which is further subdivided okay so now let us see how much length we have to keep for this particular plane scale which you have to draw over here it says the scale should be long enough to measure up to 6 meters so can you draw a line of 6 meters on your paper definitely not it means we have to first reduce it by some proportion in order to accommodate this on our paper. So now next question arises that by how many times I should reduce it. So answer to that question we will get from representative fraction. It means the very first step is calculation of representative factor or representative fraction. So what is its formula? Its formula is length of line in the drawing divided by actual length of the line on the object. So we have to find these two in the quotient. So let us search. You can see he says construct a plane scale to show meters and decimeters when 1 meter is represented by 2.5 centimeter. So where we represent? We represent on drawing. It means length of line in the drawing is 2.5 centimeter but the actual length is 1 meter. So over here we will write 2.5 centimeter divided by 1 meter. So what will be the next step? We will convert meters into centimeters. So how many zeros we have to add? Two zeros. So you can see we have converted meters into centimeters. So centimeter will cancel out. So what we will get? We will get representative fraction of 1 by 40. So what is the meaning of this? Meaning is that the size of the drawing is reduced by 40 times. So now we got our answer that if we have to draw a plane scale of 6 meters, first of all we should reduce it by 40 times. Fine. So for this we have to do another calculation that is calculate length of scale. So what is length of scale? Length of scale tells us the length which we should draw on the paper and that length will actually represent 6 meters. So that will be equal to what? That will be equal to reduction of 6 meters by 40 times. So it means what will be the formula of length of scale? That will be equal to Rf multiply by maximum length of scale. So Rf is 1 by 40 multiply by 6 meters convert meters into centimeters then what answer you will get? You will get 15 centimeters. So the meaning of 15 centimeters is that when I will draw a line of 15 centimeters on the paper that will actually represent 6 meters. So we have reduced 6 meters by 40 times to get a length of 15 centimeters. So now we can draw a line of 15 centimeters which will actually represent 6 meters. So now we can start the construction of plane scale. So a very important point to understand over here that whenever we have to solve any question of scales the very first step is we have to find representative fraction. After that we have to find LOS that is length of scale. Okay now we will understand how to draw plane scale. Now for that we have to again see what is the definition of plane scale. So what is the definition? It is a line. So how much is the length of line now? Length of line is 15 centimeter. So we will draw a line of 15 centimeter. Now come to the definition part again. Next he says it is a line which is 15 centimeter now which is divided into some equal number of parts. So next question arises that how many parts I should make over here. So answer to this question will depend upon 
how much is the length I have to show so what is the length I have to show length is 6 meters so we will divide this into 6 parts so that each part should represent 1 meter so this you should keep in your mind as a thumb rule that when we have to decide the number of parts for the line we will see how much length of the plane scale mentioned in the question then if that length is 10 or less than 10 then make same number of parts so over here it is 6 meters less, less than 10 so make same number of parts that is 6 parts now very important point to understand this is a line of how much 15 centimeter but it is actually representing 6 meters so we have decided that we will divide this into 6 parts it means 15 centimeter divided by 6 so length of each part will be 2.5 centimeters so with the help of scale we will mark 6 parts on this line segment and each part will be of 2.5 centimeter but it is actually representing 1 meter so I am again repeating so that there should not be any confusion we have drawn a line of 15 centimeter so 15 centimeter is representing 6 meters but now we have to divide this line into some parts so we have made a thumb rule that in order to decide the number of parts we will see the length of scale given in the quotient length is 6 meters so we said if that length is up to 10 or less than 10 make same number of parts it means we decided that we will make 6 parts so this is a line of 15 centimeter so we are dividing this into 6 parts so 15 divided by 6 length of one part will be 2.5 centimeter and 6 meter divided by 6 each part is representing 1 meter so I hope now it is clear to you now after this what we have to do we have to mark the points so we will start from second point we will call this as 0 below it we will mention 0 and we will follow the shapes which we have learned in letter writing then this is 1 meter 2 meters 3 meters 4 5 where is the 6th meter 6th meter we kept on left side of this 0 so we have divided this scale into two parts that means on the right side of 0 we will consider one scale on the left side of 0 we will consider second scale let me explain this if you read the question he says construct a plane scale to show meters and decimeters it means we have to represent two units on the scale so what we will do we will keep meters scale on the right side of the 0 and we will draw decimeter scale on the left side of the 0 fine so after drawing 6 points make sure that you have marked 0 on the second point fine now these are how many meters 5 meters so this is which scale this is meters scale so over here we will mention meters so for that what we will do we will draw two guidelines continuous thin lines and you will write meters in gothic style and height for these letters we will take around 7 millimeters now one very important point to understand that the line which we have drawn over here this should be a thick line continuous thick line now let us move to the next step what is the next step we have to show the second unit on the scale so we keep second unit on the left side so over here let me recall the definition again what is the definition of plane scale it is a line divided into some equal number of parts and the first part of which is further subdivided it means now you have to divide the first part into small parts but again question arises how many parts I should show over here the answer to that question will depend upon what is the next unit I have to show so what is the next unit I have to show next is decimeters now I have to see the relation between meters and decimeters why because this part which I want to divide into some equal number of parts this part 
is representing 1 meter. So now I have to show parts of decimeters. So I have to see relation between these two. And in the conversions we learned that 1 meter is equal to 10 decimeter. So if I have to show decimeter scale over here, then I have to show each part as a decimeter part. So we know in 1 meter there are 10 decimeters. So this is 1 meter. If I divide this into 10 equal parts, then only one part will represent 1 decimeter. It means now we have learned the number of parts to be made for this particular part. So we will make 10 parts. Now next question arises, what will be the length of that part? Now we know the length of this part on the drawing is 2.5 centimeters. So when we will divide 2.5 centimeters by 10, then each part will be of 2.5 millimeters. Fine. Then with the help of scale, we will mark 10 points over here and each part will be of 2.5 millimeters. So I hope up to this there is no doubt. Now this scale is a decimeter scale. So how many decimeters are there? 10 decimeters. So over here we will mention 10. So this is which scale? This is a decimeter scale. So below it we will draw two guidelines, continuous thin lines and with the help of letter writing we will write decimeters and we will mark the midway marking. We will not mark all the points because over here there will be less space so if you will mark all the points so that will not look good fine now after this we will complete the shape of this scale so for that from this point we will draw a vertical line of one centimeter one centimeter is not a standard you can take any length but we will make a standard of one centimeter so that when we will draw such scales on paper these scales should take less space. So after drawing a line of 1 cm from this point, we will draw a line of 1 cm from this point as well. Then we will connect these two points with thick line, of course. Then from all these points, we will draw thick lines to show the main divisions. So now we are ready with the construction. Below this construction, we will mention RF and LOS of the scale again by using guidelines and letter writing fundamentals. Now we are ready to answer the question. So what we have to answer? We have to mark 3.3 meters and 5.6 meters on this scale. So let us first mark 3.3 meters. So 3.3 meter means 3 meters, 3 decimeters. So it means we will pick 3 meters from meter scale and 3 decimeters from decimeter scale. So what we will do? Let us pick 3 meters from meter scale. 0, 2, 3. So from this point, we will draw continuous thin line. That is extension line after drawing, after leaving a gap of 1 millimeters. Then from decimeter scale, we will pick 3 decimeters. So this is 1, 2, 3. So first of all, below it, we will mark 3. And from top, we will draw continuous thin line after leaving one millimeter gap. So this is an extension line. So between these two extension lines, we will draw dimension line that will be again continuous thin line. So the gap between object line and dimension line, it should be minimum 10 millimeters. Then on both ends of the dimension line, we will add closed filled arrowheads of 3 ratio 1 and above the line we will mention 3.3. Now let us mark 5.6 meters. So how to mark 5.6 meters? It means 5 meters 6 decimeters. So 0 to 5. So leave 1 mm gap and draw vertical continuous thin line. Then 6 decimeters. So pick 6th decimeter. Below it place the marking and leave 1 millimeter gap and draw a continuous thin line. Then in between these two draw a dimension line followed by closed filled arrowheads and place the value 
remember the gap between two dimension line again it should be minimum 10 millimeters so i hope this particular answer is clear to you